All right, my friends, let's go ahead and get started here. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this CCNA slash CCNP Ether channel webinar. We are running this one live and also recording it for our on-demand website. We'll also have this available on YouTube and the Bryant Advantage website and the Bulldog blog as well. So those of you watching it live here will also be able to watch this in the future in an on-demand format. Since we're moving all of our CCNA webinars to that format, including our 25-hour mastermind course, we want the free material to be available to you whenever you want to watch it as well. So just a couple things here before we get started. For those of you who are relatively new to my teaching or haven't read my books before or seen my videos or anything else, uh, I'm a big believer in working on the live equipment during a lecture as often as we can. And we'll definitely be doing plenty of that throughout this webinar. To fully understand Ether channels, though, and why we use them and why they're so popular in today's networks, we need to do a little bit of STP review to begin with. Now, spanning free protocol is a big topic in our full webinar, our mastermind webinar, and on the exam as well, so we can't go over every little detail of it. But we do want to go over, well, first off, and let me ask the group this, and it's something I wanted to bring up. Uh, those of you watching the recordings as well, when I ask a question of the group or the Bulldogs, as I like to call you, then, you know, go ahead and answer. And if you're at work, you know, you might not want to answer out loud if you're supposed to be doing something else when you're watching this video. Uh, that's okay, but go ahead and answer the question because it does make it a little more interesting for you. And also it does help to drive home the theory just a little bit further. So let me ask you to begin with here, Bulldogs, looking at this network, and this is the one we're actually going to be working with throughout this webinar. We've got two switches. And right now we've got two trunks connecting them. We're going to introduce a third later, but right now we're going to stick with two. Why do we run the spanning tree protocol to begin with? What are we trying to prevent? And don't give me a one word answer. It should at least be two words. You want to be very specific about this. Yeah, what we're doing there is preventing switching loops. And a couple people will occasionally say routing loops. And the reason I want to mention this before we get into the STP operation here is that Spanning Tree Protocol runs at layer two of the OSI model, not layer three. And you hear so much about routing loops, especially as you progress in your studies, that you tend to think, well, a loop is a loop, and it's not. We're working strictly on layer two switches right here and STP prevents switching loops. The reason that you don't hear a lot of discussion about switching loops is because frankly STP works so well that you can just leave it alone. It's running by default, you can leave it at the default timers and it's going to work perfectly fine for you. A routing loop, as you're going to learn, uh, that's usually our fault. That's usually a network admin's fault because sometimes as you get into more complex network scenarios, which you will be in your future studies with your NP and I hope you'll pursue your CCIE, it's definitely worthwhile, you will see more and more complex scenarios and routes can be introduced to your network in such a manner as to create a loop. You're probably familiar with some routing protocol behaviors such as split horizon that help to prevent routing loops but there is no one-size-fits-all solution as far as a routing goes that's going to prevent a routing loop. Switching loops, though, you can just have STP running. It runs beautifully, and it's going to do a great job for you as far as preventing those switching loops. So why did I bring that up to begin with? Because, especially those of you new to networking, you really just have to get used to this, there's almost always a trade-off. When anything is that good, that probably has a little something wrong with it. And STP here is no exception, because in this particular scenario, STP is only going to allow us to use one of these two paths. One of the paths is going to basically serve as a backup. But the thing is, they're both perfectly good paths, and that's wasted bandwidth, right? If we're not using all of our available paths, then we're wasting some bandwidth. We want redundancy, don't get me wrong, we love redundancy in this, net, in this business. We like having backup paths, but we would rather go ahead and use all the available paths as we, if we possibly can. So in this particular instance group, we've got four ports involved. How many of those ports will be in blocking mode when STP finishes running? That's a good exam review question. 
how many of these four ports will be in blocking mode when STP finishes running? And instead of showing it to you, and this is from my CCNA study guide, by the way, but instead of showing it to you from there, I'm going to show it to you live uh, here on the equipment. So let's pop that up here. And here's our pod. We've got two switches, cleverly named Switch 1 and Switch 2, or SW1 and SW2. And you can see that one of the two ports here is in blocking mode. Now we'll go over to the other switch in just a moment, but let me ask you this question while we're here. Is this the root switch? Because assuming a two, a two switch network, which is what we're working with here, one of the switches has to be the root. Is this the root? And if it's not, how can you tell? And we'll go ahead and go over that while we're here right now. In this particular instance, we are not on the root. And there are a couple of different ways to tell that. First off, if this was the root in this area, you would actually see the phrase, this switch is the root. We don't expect the exam to make it that easy on us, so we better know some other ways that we could tell. When you look at the MAC address, and remember we're at layer two, so we're dealing with MAC addresses here, under root ID and then under bridge ID, if they're different, then you are not on the root. If they are the same, you're definitely on the root. Also, in this particular instance, if one of these ports or any of these ports are in blocking mode, you're not on the root. That sounds like a Jeff Fox worthy routine, right? I just realized I sound like him. If one of your ports is in blocking mode, you might not be the root switch. And let me show you exactly what I mean by that. Let's put a one there. And you can see that first off, this bridge is the root. There's your first tip off, but again, we don't expect the exam to make it quite that easy for us. Do note that the MAC address under root ID and bridge ID are exactly the same, so that means you're on the root. And then finally, if all of your ports are in forwarding mode, you might just be the root bridge. Actually, you are the root. So it's interesting to note here that out of these four ports, three of them are actually in forwarding mode. And I bring that up because it's really easy to look at it and say, well, I know that one path is not going to be used, so both of the ports on the backup path, so to speak, are not going to be used. They're going to be in blocking mode. But actually, as we just saw, that's not the case. So that's why I wanted to point that out. Now, that's one situation that we don't like as far as STP goes, is that we have a perfectly valid channel here that we're not using, the trunk over O12. There's another problem here, group. You know what that is? Can you take, take a stab at that. What is the other issue there? We talked about wasted bandwidth, and that's bad enough. But we've also got a situation where th switching theory holds that if that available trunk goes down, that backup trunk or that other port that's in blocking mode, the one on switch one, fast 012, that is not going to go immediately from blocking to forwarding mode. It's going to go through a max age and then through a listening stage and then through a learning stage. And bringing the pod back up, we can switch over to switch, run, switch one real quickly. Got to watch our 10 minute timer here for YouTube. So um, if you hear a beeping, it's my little timer here. Let's take a look at that. We've got, there's our cost of 19. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. And there's our blocking mode. So let's see, what else have we got here? If this port goes from for, goes out of forwarding mode, this port 012 will not come out of blocking mode immediately. And in part two of the webinar series, we will take a look at why.